Corsair's new Vengeance RGB Pro Series DDR4 memory gives you blazing fast speed and dynamic multi-zone RGB lighting with 10 ultra-bright LEDs per module. Customization options are practically endless with the Corsair IQ software package and they're available with black or white heat spreaders. Find out more about the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro Series via the sponsor link in the description. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for July 2018. I usually do this series every month, although I haven't been as consistent this year, but I'm getting back into it because GPU prices are recovering. And today I have two system builds for you guys. And they're also builds that I really feel like if I had a friend come to me and say, hey, I've got 800 bucks to build a computer with, what would you choose? Or I have a thousand dollars to build a computer with, what would you choose? These are the parts that I would choose for them right now. Now, quick disclaimer for anyone who sees builds in the title of this video and is actually looking for me to build something. I'm not doing that today. I'm just going over parts lists, but check out my builds playlist in the description if you want to see some actual construction of systems because I do that pretty regularly. Also, straw polls. If you guys want to give me feedback on what builds you want to see in August, please feel free to also check the link in the description and go ahead and vote on these and let me know what your choice would be. Now, last time I did this, which was actually in April, May, I asked what builds you wanted to see in June. I didn't do my monthly builds video in June because of Computex and other things, but I'm I'm still gonna go buy this straw poll and what most people wanted to see was an $800 sweet, sweet spot PC if GPU and RAM prices settle down. GPU prices have settled down a lot. RAM prices have a bit, they're still coming down. Hopefully we'll see them even reduced further, but let's get right into it with the first build. This is the $800 sweet spot gaming PC build for July and I'm using PC Part Picker to go over these lists. So links to the full lists are also of course in the description. Now the beauty of building your own gaming PC is you can sort of swap parts in and out as you choose. So for some of these parts, I'm gonna say here's what you should get, and for some of these, I'm gonna say here are some guidelines to help you choose a part that's similar to what I've got here. But if you look at the final price down here, $788.91 is what we are down to. And since this is a reasonable budget, but still budget PC with an $800 top price, I had to use some of my dirty tricks in order to get under that price while still giving you guys an awesome parts list that will be a very powerful system. So I am using mail-in rebates for this price, so bear that in mind. I'm also only going with eight gigs of memory for this build, but I will give you solutions to upgrade it to 16 gigs if you choose. And it's also somewhat limited on storage. It's only got a 240 gig SSD, which you'll probably run out of space with in the long term. So I recommend, as I've done many times in the past, finding an old computer with maybe a 500 gig, one terabyte, maybe two terabyte hard drive in it, grab that hard drive, reformat it, and then install it in this system to give yourself some mass storage. If you don't have that available, consider an extra 40 bucks or so to get a mechanical storage drive in here so you make sure you have all the room you need for your Steam games and anything else you might want to load up on here. Let's go over the actual parts. This is an AMD build because the uh, AM4 platform right now with X370 and X470 motherboards available, I just feel like is the most flexible. And again, it gives you the most bang for your buck. So Ryzen 5 1600 with an X370 motherboard, 8 gigs of memory, 240 gig SSD, and RX 588 gig for, oh my gosh, like about the retail price? The heck is going on? This is crazy. Uh, a Fantex Eclipse case for only $60 and a Corsair 650 watt power supply that has all black cables. Now the processor is exciting just because it's a six core, 12 thread processor and you can get them for $160 right now. These have come way down in price since Ryzen second generation has launched, um, but you don't necessarily need Ryzen second generation. They're not that much faster. It's very incremental of an update. So Ryzen first generation, you can still get and the prices are very reasonable. So with this, you get a 3.6 gigahertz tur turbo boost. It is unlocked, so you can't overclock it a bit more. And one of the things I do like is, got, uh, is it's got an included cooler the Race Spire 95 watt, which is the bigger one. It's a little bit beefier, so that does provide adequate cooling, although you might want to upgrade it in the future, but um, we'll leave that for a future potential upgrade. Now the motherboard I chose is an ASRock X370 Killer SLI AC. It's a full-size ATX motherboard. This is a full-size ATX build because it gives you a little bit more flexibility with parts you choose, as well as a little bit more ease of actual building if you're um, a first-time builder, for example. And this motherboard is a very good set of features for only about $110 if, again, you apply the mail-in rebate from Newegg. Now, aesthetically, it may or may not please you. It's got a big old K in the middle, but other than that, a pretty black and white color scheme. And a few reasons I chose this board. You can get onto this platform with like a B350 or the upcoming B450 motherboards for a bit cheaper than this, but for $110, you get the X370 chipset, which does provide you the capability of doing two-way graphics cards in the future if you want. 
You're probably not gonna do that, but the reasons I chose this motherboard were a bit more specific. I wanted the motherboard to have USB 3.1 Gen 2, which this has. I wanted it to have 802.11ac Wi-Fi, which this has, and that is not a huge requirement. You can't add 802.11ac Wi-Fi to any of these other motherboards. So if you find another motherboard in this price range with the same set of features that you like a little bit better, whether it's aesthetics or build quality or just some feature that you feel like you really need to have, you can always add 802.11ac Wi-Fi in the future. But again, for 110 bucks, I feel like it's a nice feature set. This has uh, Tom's Hardware Editor Recommended re reward Award, and uh, it's also got pretty decent power delivery, so if you do happen to be overclocking in the future, uh, it's got the, the power delivery for it, as well as a bit of cooling on there, which you are gonna want if you overclock. If you're building a Ryzen system, then once you've chosen your motherboard, I highly recommend going over to your motherboard support page, go to the memory QVL, uh, the memory support list, and they'll typically for this have an old one and then a new one that's updated for Raven Ridge. We're using a first gen Ryzen processor, so we're looking at the not Raven Ridge one, and then here you can choose different memory manufacturers and try to figure out some memory that will work with it because getting higher speed memory that is also compatible with Ryzen is pretty important. Uh, G Skill, Crucial, uh, different vendors have different memory sets that have been tested. But all that is to say you can go through those lists, find memory that you know will work, use the actual module SKU name to search the memory that you will find, and then hopefully you can find memory that is functional and not terribly expensive. I chose for this build this A data kit of XPG Gamix D10 memory, which uh, this memory kit is not specifically listed on the compatibility page, but it is the same exact memory brand and timings as some of the SKUs that are listed as compatible, and I double checked some of the reviews to make sure that this should just work and plug in with your Ryzen CPU. It is 3000 speed memory, and I recommend 3000 speed or faster for a Ryzen, and this should run at either 3000 or 2933 if you go and plug in the XMP settings, and it's $100 for an eight gig kit at Amazon, which is better than it has been previously, but you can actually get a little bit more memory for your money, money if you're willing to spend a little bit more and get a 16 gig kit, but more on that in just a minute. Our SSD is the SSD Plus from SanDisk. I've used this multiple times in the past. It's a solid SSD. It's even got a nice black and red color scheme, and it's available for 54 bucks at Amazon. That's a solid entry level price for an SSD, and that's where it should be. Moving on to graphics card here, I decided to go with the RX 580, and uh, this is pretty much just sorted by the cheapest one, and you should maybe double check which RX 580 you're getting if you're doing this parametric filter sorting option. This one is the MSI, uh, which has an aftermarket cooling solution. It is black and red, uh, so it's not gonna match quite as well with our black and white color scheme for the rest of the build, but it'll work, and hey, we're on a budget build, so the uh, color coordination was a little bit less of a concern. I'm just excited you can actually get RX 588 gigs, which are very solid cards for around $250, $260. For our case, we have the Fantex Eclipse P400, and this is a $60 case, at least right now, with a $10 mail-in rebate. Usually costs about $80, so if this case doesn't exactly, um, you know, do it for you, then definitely check other $60, $70 case options, because there's tons of them out there. Uh, I just like this one, because it's black and white, it's at least this particular model that's on sale, so it will match the black and white motherboard, uh, decently so. It's got a little bit of RGB in there, it's got tempered glass, it's got a painted interior, so it's a solid case, especially for $60 and that reduced price. It's available in other color combinations too, but I believe right now if you want to steal from Newegg, you gotta get it in white, but hey, I think, again, that one, that's the one that'll match, so the P400, solid little case from Fantex. Finally, we need a power supply, and here I actually had chosen a different one yesterday, but the sale went away on it, so I've got the Corsair CX 2017 version, uh, 650 watt, 80 plus bronze rated power supply. It's not modular, but it does have all black cables, and that's really kind of what I was going for. Other than 80 plus bronze rating, I wanted 550 to 650 watts, and uh, the all black cables is gonna make sure that you don't get the nasty ketchup and mustard stuff going on when you install it, especially since you've got that tempered glass side window to look through. And that's my build for $800 that I would recommend right now. I really like it because it's a high-end gaming PC. It's also got a six core CPU, so not only can you game with it, but if you wanted to do something like video editing or gaming and streaming at the same time, it would totally be able to do that too. But I did mention that I cut some corners with this build, so for $1,000, you can do a couple little upgrades that'll give you much better gaming performance and also give you a lot more memory to work with because I think 
with this $800 version, the thing you're going to be limited on most is going to be that memory. So here is the $1,000 version of this build uh, with a GTX 1070 upgrade as well as a memory upgrade. And if you look at the list, everything else is pretty much exactly the same. Same processor, same motherboard, same SSD, uh, same case and same power supply. $988.82 is the price total here on PC Part Picker. So let's just quickly go over the updated different parts. This is basically the same memory kits, but it's available in the 16 gig, 2x8 instead of uh, 2x4, and it's $160. So you noted that first kit was 99, double the memory for $60 more, so you are getting more gigs per dollar here with this updated kit. Of course, you're spending 60 bucks more, so not quite gonna stay with the $800 price limit if you're going with this kit with that first build, but you can use, of course, this kit with that initial first build too, if you wanted to. So if you just wanted to upgrade this, you totally could. Next, for a video card, I wanted a GTX 1070. I was also looking at 1070 Ti's and uh, GTX 1080's. 1070 Ti's are 450 bucks, 1080's you can get for $500. So again, just to keep the price reasonable, I went with the 1070, which you can get for $410. I'm using a parametric filter again uh, with the PC part picker list here, so it's just gonna choose the cheapest GTX 1070 that's out there. But I would recommend you reality check that list. So like if you go over here, the cheapest one is the 1070 Aero, um, which which, you know, is a perfectly adequate GTX 1070, but it's a smaller one with a single fan. It's not gonna cool quite as, quite as well. Might not be able to run at higher frequencies for quite as long. So for three bucks more right now at Amazon, you can get the 1078 gig from MSI, which is a larger card, larger cooler, two fans. It's also black and white, so this would totally match with the build. So I think I would go with this one over that uh, mini version if you're choosing between the two, and that pretty much wraps it up for the $800 and $1,000 builds, um, but a couple other things to mention before I leave because there are potentially other upgrades that you guys might want to consider. Now, the air cooling, I think, is one thing that you might dive into, but honestly, the Race Spire does a perfectly adequate job, so let's save that for later. For now, I think, apart from the memory, these are the other things that I would consider an upgrade for. The SSD I already mentioned might be a little small at 240 gigs. Upgrading to a 480 gig SSD, you can do that and get yourself one for less than $100 right now. Actually, as low as 80 if you're willing to go with some of these more budget ones. These might not be quite as fast, but uh, they're still SSDs, so they're still gonna be fast. Um, but like the ADATA XPG uh, or the SanDisk SSD Plus here for 100 bucks, uh, that would give you a nice boost in base storage. And then uh, your CPU, of course. One of the very nice things about AM4 is that you can upgrade from a four core to a six core to an eight core on the same platform. That Ryzen 5 1600 at $160 is, is just a really nice deal for six cores for $160. You can get the 2600, which is the second gen Ryzen version of that for about $30 more, but honestly, I think it's worth it just to stick with the 1600. If you are gonna upgrade, the Ryzen 7 1700 for $220 jumps you up to eight cores and 16 threads. So if you really are considering uh, gaming and streaming at the same time, or in particular video editing, uh, that eight core I think would be a great option for you. But guys, those are my builds for July 2018. Of course, links to all the parts are down in the video description, so check those out if you haven't already. Uh, definitely hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe to my channel for more tech content coming at you very soon, including the upcoming Riptide water-cooled system build, which I'm really looking forward to. If only it would cool off a little bit in California so I can work out in the garage in the afternoon without it getting too hot. But I'm getting distracted, so thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.